whatever time it is that you've tuned in to listen to this summary of the book, The Quick and Easy Way to Effective Speaking by Dale Carnegie. I'm Joel D'Souza and I'm going to be spending the next few minutes to give you a quick summary of this amazing book which I'm sure that all of you are going to find interesting as well as very helpful. So let's get started with the summary of this right away. Introduction How do you feel when somebody passes you the microphone at a party? What would you do if you are asked to present a report before a panel of experts? What would be your reaction when you are invited to deliver a talk at a conference? For some people, they are thrilled and excited to take these opportunities. They would even want more speaking engagements. But for others, they find these opportunities nerve-wracking and stressful to handle. If you hate the feeling of being the center of attention on stage, then this book is the right fit for you. This book will guide you on how to become an outstanding public speaker. This book is not like the others. Several books on public speaking focus on the technicalities such as vocal articulation. This book will zero in on how you can capture and retain your audience's interest. It tells the stories of success, how shy individuals who feared public speaking now have turned into successful speakers on stage. These people are now often quoted by many and their talks have impacted many lives. This book lets you be who you are. It will help you build self-confidence, optimism, and determination. By the time you're done reading this, you'll be able to brush off your fears and worries aside. This book will help you embrace public speaking. Acquiring the Basic Skills If you fear public speaking, your obvious desire would be to overcome it and even possibly remove self-consciousness. You would want to have confidence and poise. Most especially, you would want to get your ideas together in a logical order. So, how can you talk clearly and help people understand your point? First, you should learn from the experience of others. Nobody was born a public speaker. It is a skill that needs to be mastered. It can even take years to perfect. Second, you should always keep your goal in mind. Remember the benefits you can get from being self-confident and from speaking effectively. You will gain more friends and increase your capacity to serve your community. You can even have an influence in your workplace. Knowing how to speak well will also prepare you for assuming leadership roles. Third, you should predetermine your mind for success. It will greatly help you if you think positively about your chances to succeed in public speaking. A negative mindset will do you no good. Fourth, you should seize every opportunity to practice. Knowing all the do's and don'ts of public speaking won't be enough to make you good at it. You need to continually practice. You will never know what progress you can make unless you keep on practicing. The author, Mr. Dale Carnegie, received a message from Cuba that surprised him. It was from a man named Mario Lazo. Lazo informed Carnegie that he would be coming to New York to take up training with Carnegie on how to make a speech. When they finally met in New York, Lazo filled Carnegie in with his problem. The Havana Country Club 
was going to celebrate their 50th birthday of its founder. Lazo was asked to present the founder with a silver cup and to make the main speech of the evening. Lazo was an attorney, but he admitted that he never made a public talk in his life. In fact, he was terrified of public speaking. He thought that making a terrible speech would be deeply embarrassing to his wife and himself. It might also lower his reputation when it came to clients. This is the reason why Lazo came to New York. The challenge was Lazo will be in New York for just three weeks. And so, for three to four times a night, he practiced speaking in Carnegie's class. Three weeks later, Lazo delivered his speech at the Havana Country Club. His address was so outstanding that Time magazine made a report about it. They described Lazo as a silver tongued orator. This shows that many individuals used to hate public speaking, but they are now successful speakers. This miracle can happen to you as well, developing confidence. How many opportunities did you miss just because you were afraid of speaking to a group? Here are some tips for you to defeat stage fright. This can also help in developing your self-confidence within a few weeks. First, you should be aware of the facts. You are not alone in your fear of public speaking. A lot of people, even professional speakers, experience stage fright. The reason why you're afraid of public speaking is simply that you're not used to it. That is why practicing regularly can help you overcome that fear. It's just like playing tennis or driving a car for the first time. You'll never master them if you don't practice. Second, prepare properly. Never memorize a speech word for word because you might forget the words and panic on stage. Speak in your own words to become livelier, more effective and more human. However, you can assemble and arrange the outline of your talk beforehand. This will ensure that your talk will follow a logical pattern and fit into the time frame given to you. Practice the speech with your friends too. They can provide you with feedback. Third, attract success by becoming optimistic. Lose yourself in your subject and show your audience the passion you have. Give yourself a pep talk and encourage yourself to do good. Lastly, act confident. Breathe before you start. Stand straight and maintain eye contact with your audience. People are there to listen to you alone. So take charge and show them what you got. Vance Bushnell was the Vice President of the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Years ago, he was asked to address 2,000 attendees from all over America. He was just beginning his career in the business insurance industry. But because of Bushnell's success, he was chosen to deliver a 20-minute talk. Bushnell accepted it. But unfortunately, he made a mistake. He memorized his talk word for word and practiced every expression and gesture in front of the mirror. When the day came, and Bushnell stood on stage, his mind went blank. He took a step back and attempted to start his talk again. Now, the stage setup is essential to the story. 
The stage had no railings and there was a big space between the back of the stage and the wall. Bushnell kept on stepping back and repeated a few lines of his talk. But by the fourth time he stepped back, he fell down the stage and the audience burst out in laughter. Luckily, the audience thought that it was just an act. Bushnell was so embarrassed that he offered to resign. But his superiors rejected his resignation and helped him to restore his self-confidence. Later on, Bushnell became one of the most effective speakers in the organization. He never memorized a speech ever again. Speaking effectively the quick and easy way. Have you ever listened to someone talk about a complicated topic? Were you able to understand the content of their talk? Your mind probably wandered while they were talking. There is a downside to being a public speaker, no matter how good you are. Your audience will not listen to you if you keep on using complicated words. Their attention won't be on you either if you just keep on quoting the contents of a book. You have to give your talk a personal touch. So, how do you speak effectively? First, you should talk about something that you are knowledgeable about. Your talk could be about a topic you studied well, or it could be about your profession. It could be about your life struggles and how you overcame them. It could be a hobby of yours, or it might be something you've experienced that is unique. Your audience will know if you just memorized it or if you know it by heart. This will make all the difference on whether or not you're worth listening to. Second, be sure you're excited about the topic. You should be able to show enthusiasm to your audience. Talk about the topic in a positive light. This can make the audience lean forward in their seats to listen to you more. Third, be eager to share your talk with the audience. You should be able to transfer your excitement to them. Be audience-centered, not self-centered. Speak to your audience in words that they can understand. Carnegie once conducted a public speaking course for the senior officers of New York City banks. These officers were always busy and they had little time to prepare for the course. Mr. Jackson, an officer from an uptown bank, was assigned to give a talk to the class. Naturally, he was not prepared. In a rush, he walked out of his office and bought a copy of Forbes's magazine. Mr. Jackson then proceeded to the class. For his talk, he read aloud the article from the magazine entitled, You Only Have 10 Years to Succeed. Mr. Jackson attempted to talk about the article, but he failed. He had no real message for his talk. His gestures and tone made it obvious. When he was done, Carnegie told him that there was not a single touch of Mr. Jackson in the talk. People do not want to listen to what the author of the Forbes article said. People wanted to learn about Mr. Jackson and his thoughts. Mr. Jackson read the article again. He realized that he did not agree with the author at all. So he recalled his experiences as a bank executive to prepare his speech. The next week, he came back and spoke to the class. Mr. Jackson spoke from his own experience and the audience was captivated. It was clear that his second attempt made a stronger impact on them.
This is how you become a successful public speaker, earning the right to talk. If you want to become successful as a speaker, you should know how to keep your audience interested. The following are ways to help you with this. First, limit your subject. Narrow down your topic, especially if you are given a limited time to talk. What would happen if your talk sounded like the contents of a world almanac? Your audience would probably yawn. Focusing on a specific topic will make your audience understand you more. It will also help you follow a logical pattern in speaking. Second, you should develop reserve power. You should be knowledgeable about the topic by studying and researching. Through this way, you can make your ideas clearer. This will also prepare you in case the audience has questions for you. Third, you should fill your talk with illustrations and examples. Humanize your talk by sharing to your audience about your experiences. People would love to hear about you unless you talk about yourself in an offensive manner. Personalize your talk by using names and pronouns. You can use made-up names in your examples. This will help the audience in understanding who did this and who said what. If you want to go the extra mile, dramatize your examples by using dialogue. Conversations can help your talk become more relatable. Fourth, use concrete, familiar words that create pictures. Create a realistic picture for your audience. For example, when you mention the word dog, different kinds of dogs might enter the audience's heads. But when you mention bulldog or German shepherd, the picture becomes clearer for them. John Gunther, the author of the best-selling book Inside, was working on a series of articles on mental hospitals. He collected information and explored the institutions he went to. Gunther used all different sources of information. He studied national and local government reports as well as private hospital statistics. However, in the end, Gunther only wrote four short articles out of it. It was simple enough to make good speeches. The several notebooks he used throughout his research probably weighed 20 pounds, but the published articles weighed only a few ounces. Gunther tells us that not everything should be included. Only the essential points must be taken in writing, just like when delivering a talk in public. Set aside the other facts as your reserve power for future use. Delivering the talk How do you deliver a talk while connecting to your audience? How do you know if they are on the same page as you? First, you should crash your shell of self-consciousness. You should remove all barriers that hold you back from speaking genuinely and presenting your authentic self to people. Once you set yourself free on stage, you'll feel like a bird that flew away from its cage. Second, don't try to imitate others. Be yourself. You have a unique spark. Always remember that there is no one else exactly just like you. Cherish your individuality and show them who you are. Third, converse with your audience. 
deliver the message from your mind and heart to the audience's minds and hearts. Imagine that you are talking to every person in the room. Speak with them directly and naturally. Fourth, you should put your heart into your talk. As mentioned, if you are passionate about your topic, you will not have much trouble talking about it to a group of strangers. Remember that your excitement and enthusiasm must be felt by the audience. Lastly, practice making your voice strong and flexible. You can improve your performance as you practice regularly. Try to evaluate the volume, pitch, variation and pace of your voice. You can study yourself through video or audio recordings. It can also be helpful to let your friends hear you talk first, weeks or days before you go on stage. Carnegie once went to a summer resort in the Swiss Alps. He stayed in a hotel where a couple of lecturers from England come every week to talk to the hotel guests. One of them was a well-known English novelist and her topic was the future of novel. As she talked, the writer admitted that she did not choose the topic. Her words were not clear and she did not even look at the audience. It was as if she was ignoring them. The writer would rather look at her notes or the floor. She seemed distant not only towards the topic but most especially to her audience. The whole talk sounded as if it were being delivered to the floor rather than to a group of living human beings. This is what you should avoid if you want to become successful and impactful as a speaker. Always convey your message with enthusiasm and excitement. Most importantly, connect with your audience. Conclusion In this book, you learned that nobody is born a public speaker. Even professional public speakers still have a little stage fright when they are on stage. What matters most is that you keep practicing. You learned to keep your goals in mind when making a speech. Get rid of your worries by thinking of the benefits. You can gain new friends and advance your career through public speaking. Pull success towards you by having a positive mindset. If you think that your speech will be a success, it will come true. You learned how to prepare your talk in advance. Don't memorize your speech word by word. This will make you look and talk like a robot. This can also make you forget your words. Always talk from the heart and never restrict yourself. The audience can understand you better with emotions. A great public speaker should act confident and feel confident. Remember that people came to see and listen to you. Command the stage. Choose a topic that you are passionate about. This way, it won't be difficult for you to talk and answer questions from the audience. Becoming successful in public speaking is a process. Nobody becomes an effective speaker in just a day. That is why you should apply all the tips mentioned in this book. One day, you will hear a round of applause or see a standing ovation after your talk. So, hang in there and continue practicing.